Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to cover JSON Web Tokens, commonly known as JWT. As usual, we're going to start with a bit of a primer on what J JWTs are and how they work before diving into how we can attack and exploit them. As always with these videos, I hope you can learn something new and improve your workflow. And if you feel like it does do that, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive straight in. So I want to start off with that JWTs JSON web tokens, like a lot of things, aren't inherently insecure. It's either the design of the application, configuration, or handling of JWTs that leave applications open for attack. So let's take a quick look at the structure of a JSON web token. And if you instantly think to yourself, ah, seems like base64, then you'd be correct. We actually have three parts to a JSON web token, the header, the payload, and the signature. These three parts are separated by full stops, and we can either decode each piece manually or use some tool like jwt.io to take a closer look. So the header contains the metadata about the token, such as the encryption algorithm used for the signature. The payload contains what are called claims. These claims can easily be tampered with, but should be protected with a signature that would detect any tampering. Typical things you might see are username, role, email address, etc. Some claims are part of the JWT standard and others like usernames are set by the application when the token is issued. The last section, the signature, is usually generated by hashing the header and the payload together. So how is using JWTs different from using a session token? Well, let's walk through a typical flow and take a look. Now don't worry if it's not entirely clear at the moment. The next section, I have a small demo application showing this process so we can see it in action as well. So first up, we provide credentials to the application. Then we get back a session ID or a JWT, a JSON web token. We navigate to our dashboard or account page. Now with the session ID, the server looks it up in its memory or database, wherever the session IDs are stored to check if it's valid. If it is, it can get the information of that user that the session ID is tied to. With JWTs, the server can just validate the token. So in this case, the session and the user are handled client side. So why is this useful? Well, if we have a service that is made up of many other services, like in a microservice architecture, we can't rely on traditional session handling. JWTs in this case are more flexible, scalable, and portable. Something to add though, I'm not necessarily saying that JWTs are better. It really comes down to the architecture of the application and what you're trying to achieve. We should be using different solutions based on the problem that we're trying to solve. Now you might also be thinking, hmm, if everything is just stored on the client, how are we going to stop tampering with the JSON web token? Well, in a correct implementation, it will be signed using the secret that only the server knows. But of course, we all know that not all secrets are created equal, and cracking a weak secret with brute force so that we can sign our own tokens is going to be the first demo we walk through. So let's take a look. Here, we have a very simple demo that I quickly built in Node.js. Now, don't worry if you're not used to reading JavaScript. We're going to step through the process of logging in and requesting a resource. The code here doesn't actually matter. This could be written in any language. So at the top, Something to note is we have our secret. So const secret at the moment equals secret one, two, three. And in the application, when you send a request to slash login, it's gonna say, hey, the username and password is equal to the request body. So the username and the password that are passed in the request. And what I've done here is I've just hard coded some users. Obviously here you'd have a call to a database, but I've just put if the username is user and the password is equal to user, then give them a token that's signed uh, that has the user ID of user. And it's signed with the secret that we can see here. Same again for the admin. So if your username is admin and your password is admin, send back a signed JSON web token. Um, with the user ID of admin signed with our secret. If there's an error or some issue, you didn't provide the right credentials, just send back a 401 message uh, that says the username and password you provided uh, are invalid. Uh, it says you're provided, you provided. So down below we have one other endpoint. So we have slash dashboard 
And here we have our token, which is equal to the response.header.authorization.split. And we have to split the token because when it's in the header, it usually says bearer, and then the JWT token comes after that, and we just want the JWT token. So all it's doing is it's grabbing that, uh, that portion of the header. So our token is being passed in to this variable token. If there's no token, send back a 401 saying unauthorized. Otherwise, um, set a variable called decoded, and this is equal to jwt.verify. So we verify the token with this function, and we again use the secret to verify it. And then if that's successful, um, the request.user equals uh, decoded, so the decoded token, and then we're catching any errors, and we'll throw back 400 with the error message uh, if there's a problem with this decoding process. So if we have an invalid token, for example, it will throw an error. And if this is, if this is successful, um, we send back a 200, status code 200, and then we put welcome to your dashboard, and we're just gonna pass back the uh, user ID that we grabbed from the token. So when we logged in, uh, the user ID was either set to user or admin based on uh, the credentials sent. So let's quickly uh, demo this. So if I just do node server.js, and hopefully it will work. I already pre-made the curl request. So here we're just posting to localhost slash login with the header content type JSON and the username as admin and the password as admin. So to begin with, let's log in as the user. So we're just gonna put user, uh, username user, password user. And here we get our JSON token back, so in the response. And now what we want to do is we want to access the dashboard. So here, if I grab this curl request, we just say curl uh, dash i to http slash slash localhost slash dashboard, and then the header authorization bearer, as we looked at before. And then here we need to copy and paste in our JSON web token. Now, if we hit enter, we say, hey, welcome to your dashboard user. If we actually send this again, and let's say we change something in the token, I'm just gonna delete one character. We get back saying, JSON to web token error message, invalid token. And you can see that the server also throws some uh, errors into the log as well. So this is the application and how it works. Like I say, you, you basically get a token and then you supply the token and the server will verify whether that token is valid and your status as a user or your user ID is based on the token that you supply. We can also have a quick look at this token in jwt.io. So if we just copy the token, paste it in here, you can see the algorithm, the type, the user ID is user, and the issued at time, and it gives us a timestamp. And what we can do is we can try and manipulate this. So let's say admin, and try and send this again, and see whether our application accepts this. So I'm just gonna clear, and then paste. And you can see we have an invalid signature. Now I know that the secret is secret one, two, three, so if I, put in secret one, two, three, and generate this token. We have indeed successfully forged the token. So if we know the secret, or if we can get our hands on it, we can easily create tokens. But in most cases, we won't actually know uh, what the token is. So what we're gonna have to do is I'm just gonna, uh, whoops, let me copy a valid token. In fact, let me just, go back and grab a token from the user. So we'll grab this one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use JWT tool. And if you don't know how to use the tool, dash dash help, it's always very useful. And we're going to use the um, crack functionality. We're gonna pass it in a dictionary and hopefully we're gonna get this secret. So. If you want to know how to install and use it, obviously just check out the, the GitHub repository for JWT tool and you should be good to go. 
I'm just going to pass in the token and then dash dash crack. And then we need a dictionary. So I'm just going to use the opts uh, JWT. And I think it comes with a yeah JWT common. And we should be good. So in about a split second, it cracked it and told us that the secret is secret one, two, three. You can obviously use a much bigger word list like user share word lists rock you or something from sec lists. And it found it again, really, really quickly. Now, if it's set to something more secure, so let's say I don't exist in rock you one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like this, this is probably not going to be cracked by uh, the rock you word list. Ah, we need a new token. So let me just grab a new, a new one. And you can see it's going through the word list and um, it's getting through it pretty quickly actually. So 1 million tested, 2 million tested. And this VM is by no means all that powerful. It's probably got 16 gig of RAM and I think I've given it six cores to work with. It's not using my GPU that the host has. You'll get faster results with Hashcats and on a dedicated cracking machine, obviously it's gonna be significantly faster. But as you can see, if the token is set, um, if it's something, anything relatively weak, it's probably quite easy to crack. And we get key not in dictionary. So that's, that's not a bad uh, amount of time to get through uh, Rocky, which is I think about 14 million, oh yeah, tested 14 million passwords. So about 14 million passwords. So some other similar attacks might be misconfigurations where a developer, instead of using verify, uh, is actually using decode. So actually I can show you this quickly. So if we just come back to our code here and we find our verifies, uh, if we just copy and paste this line and then uh, I'm just gonna comment this one out and we change this to decode and then I come back to the web server. I'm just gonna reset the server and then I'm just gonna go back up and grab a token again. So we're just gonna, again, send a post to slash login with user user, take this token, go to jwt.io, change this to admin. And in this case, we don't know the key, so we'll just leave it as we don't know that was there before, but this key could be anything really. Copy this token again, and then we want to send a request to the dashboard with the, our new token. And because it's using the decode and not verify, it's actually just gonna decode the token uh, and trust the contents implicitly without checking the signature. So we get welcome to your uh, dashboard admin. So this can obviously be really easily discovered through testing, or if you're doing uh, some code review on an application that's handling a lot of JSON web tokens, you can easily check for the decode method. So we've just started to scratch the surface really, and there are quite a few more techniques for attacking JSON web tokens, such as uh, algorithm confusion and header injection, alongside many other misconfigurations that can arise from application to application. Now, if you'd like to see more of that, then let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can do a JWT deep dive, though I suspect that video would be quite a few hours long. So if anyone's willing to watch it, if you have the patience, maybe I'm willing to make it. Um, you should definitely check out the repository from JWT tool, which I have open here. It has some great information on attack methodologies for JSON web tokens. And also if you scroll right down to the bottom, there's also the attack playbook, which outlines some methodologies and exploits for JSON web tokens. So if you want to learn more, this is a great place to start. And then of course, as always, Port Swigger has some great content and some great labs on JSON web tokens and how to attack them as well, including some of the stuff that we looked at today. So brute forcing secret keys, uh, et cetera. So that's it for this video. I hope it got you off to a good start that you can now expand on. As always, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.